a tragic moment at the Dubai Air Show on Friday afternoon as an Indian Tejas fighter jet crashed during a flying demonstration. You know what's really sad and embarrassing? When a country hypes up its shiny new indigenous fighter jet as a symbol of national pride, you know, boasting about it being domestically made with advanced flawless technology and performance, and then it crashes spectacularly at an international air show. That's exactly what happened yesterday on the 21st of November 2025, when the Hal Tejas, India's so-called homegrown light combat aircraft, went down during a demo at the Dubai Air Show, killing its pilot and raising awkward questions about India's military tech ambitions. Here's basically what happened. It's the final day of a major air show at Al Maktoum International Airport in Dubai. Spectators are enjoying the displays, families are out, cameras are rolling. The Tejas takes off for its demo, makes a couple of circuits, then attempts a low-altitude maneuver. And at around 10 past 2 in the afternoon, the jet suddenly drops, slams into the ground, and explodes into a huge fireball. Thick black smoke, panic, confusion, the whole deal. The pilot, Wing Commander Namanch Sial, didn't survive. A tragic loss, and one that deserves respect. Now here's the uncomfortable part. This isn't the first accident involving the TGS program. There was another crash just last year where the pilot managed to eject. So this latest disaster doesn't come out of nowhere. It adds to a growing list of concerns that the hype around indigenous excellence might be running way ahead of reality. And this is where we need to talk about something India rarely wants to acknowledge publicly. The fact that the Tejas jet has real technical issues, and they've been there for years. The aircraft has suffered from chronic weight problems, making it heavier than it was originally designed to be. That reduces its agility, payload capacity and range, which as you can imagine, is a big deal for a light combat aircraft. Then there's the engine. India still relies on the imported GE F404 because its own Kaveri engine project failed to meet reliability and performance standards, even after decades of work. The jet has also faced maintainability complaints from engineers and pilots, from complicated servicing routines to limited access points that make repairs slower than they should be. Add to that delays in integrating modern avionics, radar upgrades that took years longer than promised, and persistent supply chain bottlenecks that force the IAF to cannibalize parts between jets. All of this doesn't necessarily cause an airshow crash, but it absolutely shapes the broader picture of a platform that still feels under development even after being declared operational. But let's be honest, the Dubai crash didn't come out of nowhere. The Tejas has a history that India really wishes people wouldn't bring up. Over the years, there have been multiple incidents during training flights where pilots had to abort missions or make emergency landings because of technical faults. Everything from hydraulic glitches to avionics hiccups to engine performance issues that simply weren't supposed to happen on an operational jet. Even during large military drills like the IAF's own high-intensity exercises, some TJAS units were quietly pulled from certain missions because they weren't meeting sortie generation or readiness targets. None of this becomes front page news in India, of course. It usually stays buried in internal reports and defense analyst circles. But the pattern is clear. The jet has struggled to deliver consistent reliability under real world conditions. And when a fighter aircraft can't guarantee stability during training, it raises the kind of uncomfortable questions that no amount of marketing or chest thumping can cover up. For example, just last year in Rajasthan, there was a Tejas jet crash during Air Force exercises resulting in two pilot deaths. Although news spread quickly, the government hardly spoke about it and just swept it under the rug. Back to Dubai, analysts say the maneuver was performed too low to allow recovery. Others point out that airshow stunts often push aircraft to their limits, and if the slightest thing goes wrong, there's almost no time to react. 
Think of it like driving fast on ice. One tiny mistake, and it's game over. And just to make things even more awkward, India had just signed a large contract to buy almost a hundred more Tejas jets, with deliveries planned starting 2027. So this accident isn't just tragic, it's a PR nightmare for a program that's already been struggling to prove itself. And if we zoom out a bit, then the symbolism gets even harsher. India keeps telling the world it's ready for 21st century air power and wants to compete with bigger players, mainly the US and China. But when your flagship fighter goes down in flames in front of an international audience, that confidence suddenly looks shaky. Meanwhile, other countries, especially China, are rolling out jets that perform reliably at shows and on the export market. Whether India likes it or not, people will make comparisons. Even if the top command sticks their fingers in their ears and hums Bollywood tunes, they can't escape this criticism and condemnation. But let's not forget the human side. The pilot, Wing Commander Sayal, was 37, experienced, respected, and representing his country on a global stage. His death should push India toward more transparency, more caution, and more honesty about the real state of its domestic defense manufacturing, not just political slogans. It's what really makes me angry. The lack of transparency and the political lies only serve to harm regular people. India has announced a formal investigation, which is standard procedure. But whether we'll get a fully transparent report is another story. The usual online crowd will try to spin the story, blame the pilot, blame the weather, blame foreign parts, blame anything except the larger truth. The Tejas program is still maturing, still flawed, and still struggling to meet the standards Indian netizens love bragging about. At the end of the day, an airshow crash doesn't automatically mean the aircraft is bad. But it does highlight the risks of pushing a platform that still has unresolved issues while hyping it as a polished, world-class fighter. When marketing gets ahead of engineering, reality eventually catches up, sometimes violently. So to sum it up, the Tejas crash in Dubai isn't just a tragic incident. It's a wake-up call for India's defense industry. It exposes long-standing technical problems, manufacturing challenges, and the pressure of trying to project global power before the fundamentals are truly ready. India now has to confront these issues honestly, not hide behind slogans. If you found this breakdown useful, hit that subscribe button. There's more coming your way.